We will now start the pitches. After the companies finish their pitch, judges will have approximately five minutes to ask Q&As publicly and, ten, and a 10 minute private Q&A deliberation. Then we will break to a short video or talk from some VIP speakers while the judges deliberate among themselves. So without further ado, next we have Carol Politi, President and CEO of TRX Systems. TRX Systems develops algorithms and products that deliver location indoors and underground in areas where GPS is not reliable or available. Carol, when you're ready, the stage is yours. Terrific, thank you. Uh, we look forward to, uh, to presenting our, our, our technology today. Uh, TRX delivers position navigation and timing when GPS is not available. Two of our key markets are, are the military and, and homeland security markets. Soldiers increasingly find themselves operating in contested environments with degraded or no GPS. And, and this is a subject of a cross-functional team for the Army to deliver assured PNT uh, throughout the military. In Homeland Security, our first responders often operate in harm's way indoors. And, and because GPS can't penetrate the indoors, don't have access to um, location, uh, in, and that impacts safety. Um, so those are two of our key markets. And here's a quick introduction uh, video that, that XTech uh, developed for us. TRX delivers a position when GPS is either unavailable or unreliable. TRX is focused entirely on the dismount user. That means we're focused on products that we can deliver to dismounts that require really low power, very small size products. TRX technology is called NEON, and NEON delivers assured position by taking small sensor data and combining it with map data from buildings, map data from terrain, RF data, and other position sources. We're relying on GPS for a wide range of things, and it's very difficult to operate. It's very difficult to effectively command if you don't have a knowledge base of where you are or where your team is. So we are trying to respond to the Army's need to get that accurate position at all times so that the users can effectively operate. One of our key use cases is, is delivering assured position when GPS is intentionally denied. Uh, GPS is a low powered signal um, and it can easily be intentionally denied. Uh, so our objective in those cases is to deliver a short source of PNT, a continued source of PNT, and to inform the users about the status of their position and GPS information when they're operating on the ground. Indoors, GPS doesn't penetrate. If you don't have a clear view of the sky, you can't get an accurate dot on the screen. Um, in these indoor environments, we deliver 3D location so that our, our military and first responders and even industrial users uh, have the ability to um, get that 3D location uh, and, and reduce time on mission in, in that mission when they have to operate indoors. Underground, again, you're naturally denied and we deliver proximity information for users, location information for users, they even map that under environment, un underground environment so that if it has to be re-entered, it can be re-entered more safely. TRX's commercial product uh, is based on a fusion engine that runs on an Android device. It's fusing an array of PNT sources, including inertial data coming from a small tracking unit that we've developed. That tracking unit has accelerometers, gyroscopes, compass, pressure, and other sensors. Um, and it's estimating a relative path. How far have you gone by modeling human motion and, and in which direction have you gone? And it also integrates ultra wideband. It's providing that relative path into a fusion engine, which then adds lots of other position sources. And um, this really is a fusion problem. And one of the things that we do uniquely is we can, we can, we can, um, fuse together lots of disparate uh, information and even take information that might be errored and use it for its maximum, maximum effectiveness. And that includes um, ultra wideband uh, and commercial markets. It includes Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, it includes building data, other kinds of map data. Um, it's resilient to GPS integrity issues. We're able to use that to identify integrity issues and exclude in errored GPS and other errored sensors. Um, and we've designed it so it's easily embedded and integrated into other systems. Um, so we 
our, uh, we have an embedded product now that we're integrating with other people's PNT devices, and we've got documented APIs that make it easy to add applications on top of our product or even add constraints. We've also invested a lot in, in um, our IP portfolio so that we can license this technology and our, our partners are assured that they can, they can operate. So uh, our X -tech technical thesis was very, very specific. Um, those small low swap sensors have the tendency to get errored over time and distance. Um, so, and they can get errored pretty fast. You need to have constraints uh, that you can add to the system to, to eliminate that error um, and, and so that you can continue to operate over an extended period. Our, our, our proposal is to add map data as a sensor. We had an early prototype that should promise, but it wasn't operating real time. It, it, it was a very limited prototype. Uh, we wanted to validate the dismount performance over extended and diverse paths um, to show that we could operate over extended periods without satellite, prove the approach works with a lot of environmental and map diversity, uh, and then define requirements for integration within Army, Army systems. Um, we were also able to validate performance on mounted platforms, which was really exciting. Uh, and again, we're going to show here the results of our, our, of our development and, and, of our demonstra and demonstrate the results uh, of using that map data as a sensor to extend PNT uh, for long durations for both dismounts and mounted platforms. For our dismounted platform, uh, we did multiple tests. One of the tests is profiled here. It's two and a quarter hour test. Uh, where we had GPS on for the first five minutes to initialize, then off for over two hours. Uh, it was a 10 kilometer path, so very long. Uh, and I'll show the results now uh, with the movie uh, let's see, on page 11. So what you see here is our dismount user. He's using our small sensor accessory that has inertial. He's not using the ultra wideband in this case, actually. There is no team operating. Um, and he's got fusion engines running. And what we're going to show is the benefit of using map data. Um, so what you're looking at as that user walks along is inertial only in red, which is sensor uh, fusion. Uh, and you're looking at black, which is ground truth. And then you're looking at sensor fusion plus map data in blue. Um, and you can see pretty immediately that we got an initial heading error, and this can sometimes happen. Um, it, it, parts of this path were very muddy and required jumping over streams. Uh, so it could have been one of those, those kind, of, kind of severe jumps that caused that initial heading error. And, but inertial sensors also degrade over time so that that, that error amount gets worse over time. Um, what you see with an enhanced sensor fusion result mm -hmm. is that, in fact, um, we were able to mitigate that error and show a, a result that was almost identical to GPS in that uh, in that uh, in the in that end path. Um, I go back to the slides here. Let's see. You can see that we did three of these tests. Um, and this, this two and a quarter hour test was actually had a, a variety of environmental issues, uh, wind, um, very muddy parts uh, on both, in both woods and in pavement. And we showed a mean error improvement without any satellite over that two, more than two hour path of 96%. We also did a two hour path on trails in the woods. Again, canopy cover, uh, GPS was available for the first 15 minutes and then off. And this used only low swaps uh, cell phone sensors and that map data, and we showed 93% lower error and a mean error of only 21 meters. Um, the really interesting thing is we've been able to show that we can recover uh, from, from errors in, in inertial that may accumulate or may happen uh, because of some, some one-time issue, uh, and, and that's a really important, important factor. And then finally, we, uh, to show diversity, did a test in a, in a very um, basic parking lot it was about less than half an hour test, but it had very little environmental diversity. And we wanted to show that you, you could disregard when the sensor wasn't uh, useful, uh, but also provide advantages when it was. And here we showed 80% lower error. Um, so these were really uh, exciting results for the dismount user. And then we moved on to a mounted platform. Um, so we modified the Neon Fusion Engine to take in motion from vehicles. We actually put a little wheel counter on the on the, on the vehicle and then use that small inertial device um, to, to get delta, delta position estimates from the vehicle. Um, and then we ran a test that showed that we could use the same approach uh, for the vehicle itself. Um, so if I 
uh, flip over to this, this video test. Um, what we're showing here is again that a black is ground truth, that GPS. Red is sensor fusion alone on the vehicle, and blue is sensor fusion plus map data. And that, that ability to use map data plus sensor fusion without any satellite input whatsoever allowed us to provide almost identical results to, um, to, to GPS. Um, that whole, uh, heading error you saw with inertial only on those very low swap sensors was entirely eliminated. Um, and if I quickly just go back here, that was a 90% lower mean error when we were um, operating on the vehicle um, than with inertial alone. TRX has fully built out our management team. Uh, I'm, I'm the CEO of the company. Uh, this is my third young company. I love the process of, of, of identifying a, a market space and building uh, you know, value and, and introducing new products to market and trying to find those first beachhead markets. Um, Dr. Carol Tealis is one of our founders and our CTO. Uh, she's an expert, uh, she's a PhD in control systems, an expert in signal processing, navigation, ranging, and timing. And Ben Funk is, a, is one of our founders and VP of engineering, employee number one. And he is an expert in MEMS sensors, small sensor system, systems, and, uh, and algorithms. And we've been able to be, build out a, a deep technical team that we're really, um, that, and we all really work well together. Um, you know, Sent fusion algorithms, math, control systems are kind of kind of the key areas, um, and we've built out a a full business team. Uh, so we've got a VP of products now, a VP of sales now, and a and a VP of finance to help us uh, transition. One of the things XTech really helped us do was that transition. Um, we had a beachhead um, industrial signal mapping going in. One of the things that that we did did as a first market in in the denied area was help uh, public safety organizations and cell carriers map uh, their network coverage indoors and underground. Um, so in that market, we're resold by Enritsu and Viavi and SAF, Technica, uh, where they're selling spectrum analyzers and they sell us as a bolt-on to their spectrum analyzer. It was an ideal beachhead market. Uh, and, and in this process of XTech, especially with that last award, we were able to spend a lot more, uh, a lot more of our energy on business development. Uh, in fact, we submitted 19 uh, proposals during this time. Uh, that was less than 18 months, so that was more than one a month. Uh, we've been busy, and, and they had over 12 million in value. Uh, we had nine awards uh, with eight pending. Uh, so there's only one that we that so far that we've been notified that we didn't win. And we were able during this period to, to land three phase three transition programs, uh, which is really exciting. And, and um, they include the ability to transition this specific proposal we had for XTech. Um, so that also was, was really exciting. Um, we've had 124 commercial orders, of course, uh, and uh, comprising a million dollars in value. Uh, that started with, uh, you know, kind of one and, and then four units at a time uh, at the start. Um, during the course of XTech, we've been able to, to grow that into the tens and twenties and, and now um, have uh, one one organization is operating with 150 uh, dismount subscribers in the public safety space. Um, and we have 37 quotes outstanding with 3 million in value. So we've really been able to move that, that north with this additional um, funding and, and focus on, on BD. Uh, we've also spent time uh, building out our, our, our partnerships. Uh, we're partnered with Motorola Solutions in the public safety space. Um, as I mentioned with Enritsu, who is our first partner in the, in the test and measurement space. Uh, federal resources and PT defense in the Homeland Security and industrial space for distribution. And General Dynamics is using us as a, as a solution for one of their, um, one of their solution sets. Um, we're also part of the L3 Harris Mission Critical Alliance now, uh, which, which is an exciting alliance for public safety solutions. 